One more to go, Ampere's Law. Let's turn Ampere's Law into differential form. So remember, if we have a wire and it's carrying some current, we know that it makes a magnetic field. And the magnetic field, we follow the right-hand rule, it's gonna go behind the wire and out in front. So I'll kind of draw it like this. It's gonna go, the B field's gonna kind of go like that and come back around like this. And with Ampere's Law, we could always describe a field like this, the fact that you have these circulating B fields around wires by doing a line integral around the wire. And the general statement then of Ampere's Law is the integral around some closed uh, loop of B dot DL was equal to basically mu naught times I, where B is a path you choose and I is the current that penetrates the loop. If you wanted to be a little bit more general about it, we're trying to do field theory here, is rather than think about just an exact I, is you could write that as an integral. You could say, well, maybe I have current sort of distributed through space. You could write it as mu naught, and then use something called the current density, that's actually a vector. It's the, and you could say mu naught times the integral of j dot dA. Um, over that surface. And that would be sort of a, a nicer way to put it. This is a surface integral. Slightly more general. But it doesn't get us there. We aren't ready to apply Stokes' theorem uh, to this yet. Um, and the reason is something that Maxwell had to come up with. So you may be wondering why they're called Maxwell's equations. So we have Gauss's law, Faraday's law, Ampere's law, the no-name law, and suddenly all Maxwell did was put them all together and he got, got them all named after himself. Well, he did a lot more than just put them together. We'll see at the end of the section what he did. But there is an important thing he fixed in Ampere's Law and it's like this. So Maxwell <coughs> was a very smart guy and he knew that when you're working this out that the area over which you do this integral or which you would figure out j dot dA, it doesn't have to be um, this exact surface right on this loop. You're allowed to actually make it more like a butterfly net. You can have an area out here. You can do the area right on the loop, or you can have an area that sticks out. Basically, you could have any area that's bound by the loop. Okay, so you could have a tube over here. As long as it's bound on its edge by the loop you did the B integral over, then it's okay. And that led Maxwell to think about something like this. What if you're charging a capacitor? Okay, so here we have a capacitor connected to a couple of wires and we send some current in like that. Well, you know what's gonna happen. Current's gonna flow for a while. You're gonna get some positive charge. It's gonna build up on this plate. Some negative, well, the same amount of negative charge will build up on that plate. And that's a story. But he said, let's apply Ampere's law because we know that current flows here. So we know that if we pick a path um, just like we did before, where it comes around like that, that we should be able to apply Ampere's Law and, and get the right answer. And if you do it right here, sure enough you do, you'll have the current will flow, integral of b dot dl, you will get a value for the integral of b dot dl, and the current flow on the other side is going right through the loop. But as Maxwell pointed out, the loop can go anywhere. It could go like here. Well, if it goes there, fine. The wire, can, the current can penetrate the area here or it can penetrate it back here. Ah, but then Maxwell said, what if you drew the surface where the wire doesn't actually ever go? What if we drew the surface like this, right down the middle of the capacitor? That mathematically is legal because that is a surface that is bound by this loop. So if you do that, then you get a value for the integral of B dot dl around that loop. This has a non-zero value, but then it doesn't equal zero because here no current penetrates this entire surface. Right? All the currents in the wire, the current stops when it gets to the plates. So this is a problem and this told Maxwell that the Ampere, Ampere's law is incomplete. It's missing something, okay? So basically what Maxwell said, I wasn't there, but he more or less what he said is that the changing E field 
is an effective current. Not exactly what he said, but that's what he meant, right? We need another term over here. We have a current, literal current, charge flowing, but we need another term to account for situations like this. And the thing that goes through the surface here is an E-field, right? Because an E-field is created inside the capacitor. So if you think about a changing E-field, then you'll always have this covered. You'll always have something on the right side of this equation. You'll either have current if you're here, or you'll have a changing E-field if you're here. And you'll always be okay. So the way then he wrote Maxwell's equations, or the way he wrote Ampere's law was the integral of B dot DL equals uh, mu naught times the surface integral. And the first term is the current that we're used to, the J. Okay. That's just the current density. We thought about the current per unit area and the direction that it flows. But then he added this other term plus d d t epsilon naught e. Okay. And of course, the, the epsilon naught can be outside the d d t. Basically, epsilon naught times the time derivative of the electric field, and that's all dotted with d a. So the j is dotted with d a, which is really just i, mu naught i. But then he has basically the flux, the changing e field flux inside the capacitor. And he called this not an effective current, he called it the displacement current. Displacement current, some people don't like the name, but basically the idea is we don't have current, but we have charge being displaced, creating an electric field that effectively acts like a current in Ampere's law. And this will make it, you can see, always be true. So the full name is the Ampere-Maxwell law, because Maxwell came in and fixed it. <laughs>